So thank you for joining us for our fourth video about California rapper and producer extraordinaire Mr. Earl Sweatshirt. On January the 14th, 2022, Earl released his fourth full-length studio album entitled Sick. The title is at least a triple entendre, referring to the fact that this album was written, recorded and released during the global pandemic and subsequent lockdowns. Additionally, Earl is known to toot his own horn and I would agree that his music is sick in the best sense of the world. Thirdly, Earl is not afraid to lambast the sorts of rappers he sees as lesser or weaker artists, so in a way he is sick of all the low effort mass appeal toxic inanity that is all too easy to find within mainstream American culture. Sick arrives a little over three years following 2018's masterful psychedelic Some Rap Songs. He arguably pushed the drumless avant-garde style of hip-hop on that record even further on the 2019 EP Feet of Clay, which ended up rubbing a lot of people the wrong way. I found Sick to be a nice change of pace for Earl, however, and he does it by taking the best elements of all his projects thus far and elevating them. Not only did Earl hone in on a handful of carefully selected musical and vocal collaborators for this project, but he also continues to uphold fans' expectations for introspective, eye-opening lyrics that take multiple listens to fully understand. As usual, his wordplay is top-notch, Earl is sounding more grounded and level-headed than he has on his last few records, which hints towards a more positive mental space. While this album is definitely a lament for the COVID era, making a number of references throughout the lyrics and visuals to sickness and death, it also provides listeners with a more meditative, insular Earl sweatshirt. This is a far cry from the riled up teenager listeners encountered in 2010. He reflects on a plethora of topics in the album's 24 minute runtime such as his mental health, the dissolution of odd future and reflections on revolutionary and pan-Africanist theory and history. How he is consistently able to strike such a balance in one verse songs that don't even reach 120 seconds in length continues to be one of Earl's defining skills. The album starts off with the Alchemist-produced intro, Old Friend, an ominous song that makes some explicit references to the breakup of Odd Future. Couple stains that I couldn't shield, my brother brain that we couldn't shield, couple came, couple went still, and what remains of the wolves nil. I was a teenager myself when Odd Future was first popping off, so I was in the prime age demographic at just the right time, and this line filled me with a sense of both nostalgia and unease. I tried to research what became of Left Brain, Odd Future's primary producer during their heyday, and I couldn't find a confirmed update as to his whereabouts, digital presence or musical career that was less than a few years old. That's who Earl is referring to when he says my brother brain that we couldn't shield. I feel like this line is going to haunt me for the rest of this analysis. What happened to Left Brain? Sorry to get off on a tangent right away, the conclusion of the Odd Future Collective felt both inevitable and shocking when it happened, and it doesn't seem to have ever been properly addressed by any of the key players, so I find it pretty interesting whenever one of the members references it after the fact in a song. 2010 was the first single from the album, and it's easy to hear why. Detroit-based producer Black Noise is all over sick, and 2010 has to be one of his greatest beats yet. It sounds like a jazzy neon waterfall, and Earl flows so effortlessly over it, plucking lyrical gems from thin air. 2010 was obviously a huge year for Earl. He was 16 at the time and released his controversial impressive debut mixtape that year. It was shortly thereafter that he was interned at an institution for troubled boys on the island of Samoa. Earl excellently uses this song's long verse and hook to tell something resembling a life story. He raps about how he has taken the little morsel of fame and success allotted to him through his Odd Future Association and helped fashion a brave new world of hip-hop music. The truth of that assertion is part of what makes Earl such a fascinating artist. He is incredibly popular with fans and critics alike, relative to the fact that his albums are often short, obtuse and puzzling, and sometimes upsetting. Sick feels like a reward for all of that, a relatively more straightforward album that does not sacrifice the impeccable production nor the poet laureate level wordplay. Just to get it out of the way, here are just a few of my favourite examples of Earl Sweatshirt's wordplay throughout this album. Five O's on me like the Olympics, pure gold, something told me don't mix it, sweatshirt cause you know how revenge is best served, cold dish, mask on like a supervillain, Daniel who you in the den with, lion, I'ma leave it to y'all to get hoodwinked and surprised. 
threw on some Bootsy, I'd rather be with you when I'm high. Track 3 is the title track which was produced by another long-time Earl collaborator, Navy Blue. Yes, Navy Blue. This song is where it really starts to feel like the album's concept is coming together, with Earl rapping further about his ability to gain independence from his former cohorts and label agreement, right? There are some references to drugs and the pursuit of artistic truth as usual, and it concludes with a relevant quote from the legendary fella Kuti, who Earl references on the last line of the verse. I don't want to gloss over the fella quote either, so bear with me for a moment. The quote comes from a 2000 documentary about Nigerian pop music, and in it, fella says that as far as Africa is concerned, music cannot be for enjoyment, it has to be for revolution. It speaks to the power of art in politically fraught times and places, as well as the responsibility of artists to give and contribute to their respective communities. I really hope this portion of Earl's philosophy throughout this album is not lost on those who listen to Earl for stoner jazz raps and cool sounding flows. Vision takes us back to Detroit, with Black Noise producing and Z Loopers delivering a lengthy first verse and chorus. Earl's verse and closing sample synthesize more of his autobiographical portrayals of closing the odd future chapter of his life and collaborating with more challenging and symbiotic presences. He also hints at frustrations with label execs and those who actually work relative to the musical product, which remains a mystery. Everything he say, I missed it, can't believe you get paid for this sh whatever, stock up the shelves. This song closes with a sample, the source of which I'm not sure has yet been determined, but it captures another nugget of Earl's political growth. The voices in the sample refer to the difficulty in raising black children in the United States, indicating a conflict between whether it is better to allow them to have some semblance of an innocent childhood by telling them magnificent lies about the world into which they were born, or to prepare them for the harsh reality by exposing the truth underlying the American empire. Earl's position is truth, as the magic of revealing the ugly core of society is what helps spark massive change changes to the way that society is structured. Tabula Rasa is fantastic and personally exciting for it being another collaboration with Armand Hammer. Still, I want to try and keep this analysis somewhat brief and Hammer deserves its own series of videos. Anyway, I love this song but Earl's verse doesn't say much more than what's been said already. Moving right along to the song Lie, which was also produced by The Alchemist, this song hinges on another sharp double entendre. Not only are authenticity and truth to self both huge themes on this album, but this song in particular concludes in a passage from Malcolm X's autobiography. In it, there is the description of the use of the caustic chemical known as lye to straighten one's hair into something that more closely resembles a white person's. Again, I just need to stop and praise the ways in which Earl Sweatshirt can use something so small to say so much. Black people have been and continue to be put through lifetimes of pain at the appeasement of white filtered cultural preferences. No doubt, Earl has seen his fair share of grifters and appropriators behind the curtain of major label hip hop curation and production. As much as sick is a declaration of self in a diseased and broken world, it is also a shot fired at the uncreative white wealth hoarders riding the coattails of every successful black entertainer in the history of the American music industry, and this is just what can be gathered from a stray excerpt from the great Malcolm X. Tracks like Lobby and Titanic see Earl pivoting into a dare I say trap music inspired direction. Lobby is a particularly exciting track, marking a return from Sam I Am and Brain Feeder affiliated producer who co-produced 20 Wave Caps back in 2013. It also tells a politically written, minimalistic tale of being followed by police while under the influence and in possessions of weed. It's short but poignant, another awe-inspiring example of his ability to sell a story in a few syllables. It concludes with a sample from a baseball game, in which the announcer is remarking at a player's superhuman ability to safely steal a base. It seems to reference Earl's own ability to evade the cops despite all the odds being stacked against him in such an exchange. I hate glossing over songs, but to just put a bow on it, Sick ends with Fire in the Hole, which summarizes some of the album's themes very well. Really, Sick is largely about moving on from the traumas of the past, letting go of pain, rage and indignation. Earl is still leaning on his vices, particularly marijuana, but he is not letting anything impede his fortitude through the unforgiving passage of time. Black Noise once again kills it on the production, closing the album out with a beautiful piano-based outro. 
Strange as it may seem, Sick is probably Earl's most optimistic album so far. He feels comfortable with his new squadron of underground and lo-fi hip-hop giants such as Mike, The Alchemist, Navy Blue, Black Noise and Armand Hammer. He is ready to move on from the cycle of pain and struggle that has marked a good portion of his life and career, such as the ringer of mainstream success and overzealous fame at a young age. Perhaps most importantly, he is done answering to the insidious white devils that rule from inside the panopticon be it the music industry, the American police state, or the ongoing neo-colonial efforts in the African continent. Sonically, politically, and spiritually, Sick is Earl's most concise and satisfying album so far. His ability to push complex and labyrinth sonic flourishes to a wider audience never ceases to amaze, and nowhere is that ability more on display than on this particular album. What are your thoughts on some of this album's musical elements and lyrical themes? Let us know in the comment section. Thank you for watching, as usual. Love.